In this Raspberry Pi Pico small car lesson, first we are going to learn how to calibrate the grayscale sensor, how this grayscale module is helping us to keep the car on the line. This also will be used to detect the depth if the car approaches a cliff about the feature called Don't Push Me, where you push the car over the cliff and it detects the cliff and backs off and shakes the head. Welcome to Raspberry Pi Pico Smart Car Course by Robojax. My name is Ahmed Shamshiri and I will be your instructor for this course. This course is based on Sun Founders Raspberry Pi Pico 4-wheel drive car kit. Beside this 10 lesson course, the kit has full documentations, step-by-step -step instructions, wiring diagrams, Python codes, and example projects available for download. The car can be controlled using mobile app for mobile or tablet where you can control the car fully forward, backward, turn right, turn left, and also you can turn on and off the light, you can set the power of the motors, you can see the speed in meter per second. You can see the radar obstacle avoidance data where the obstacle is. Also, you can see the line tracking or a halo deep sensor data. It can track a line or follow the line. It has cliff detector and it can follow your hand and it can avoid obstacle and drive. The kit is available for purchase on SunFounder and major online stores. The link to purchase the kit is below this video. Now let's test the grayscale module, this one, where it detects the line which has three sensors. So we need to adjust it properly so it can work. To do the wiring, we need to connect the black to the ground, the red to 3.3 volts, and then we will connect them in order. 20 from this side the yellow will be 28 then we have brown 27 and then gray 26 and th this, these are the wires for the gray scale module here the 26 27 and 28 are in here first let's put the ground to one of the ground doesn't matter red 3.3 volts and then we go from the right yellow pen 28 in here. Brown 27. And then white 26. So the wiring is completed. In order for the gray scale test to work, we need to connect the battery. Without the battery, it will not work. So the battery is connected and I'm gonna turn it on and off and we will be able to test it. And for our test, I'm going to use this white paper and I put some tape here on it. This is just a tape. And we are going to test and see the reading. The distance between this will be around one finger or about a centimeter. This is 13 millimeters. So I'm putting this underneath 
like that, and it is above that, and these are the values that we are reading. Now let's select this gray scale test. It will open. So let's see how this gray scale test code, this one, how it functions. Uh, we have this function called test gray scale, which runs here when we invoke this try. So when it comes here, this will run forever. It will stay here. And we use core get gray scale value the value that is coming from the main function of this pq4wd if i press ctrl f and search for it we are getting from this pen and we are reading 16 bits so that is for zero for one and for two and the value that we get because we you see a square bracket the value will be a list of three elements that i've just mentioned now this gray scale is zero if I press Ctrl F and find you see that the gray scale zero is pen 26 and we get the pen and we pass it to analog to digital converter and this is another pen analog to digital converter 27 and 28 so these are three gray scale pens that the uh, gray scale sensor is connected to this we are getting this value from gray scale uh, when it comes here, we have the value and we use print and then formatting. This means percent %d, which means unsigned integer with a percent. So this says print this text and the value from this, which is coming next. And then with a space, with comma and a space, print middle and uh, another uh, unsigned integer and then to the right so this d you can remember it as a digit and after this we have this percent and the values are getting this will get the first value second one and the third one will be displayed now if i run this code you see this is now the result of this without any connection or any anything is something like this so we print this text left colon and then left colon and then 224 is this one is coming from this value this percent mean go and get it from here so it will be printed like this and the same way for the middle and right we use this test gray scale when the sensors are on the white area you will get something like 23,000 or more than 20,000 and if you are on the black area you will get very low reflection around 3,000 but when you are on the cliff you get the least uh, reflection because nothing is coming back uh, the underneath is ha hollow let me turn the light off So this one is detected something, the first one, the second, and the third one, and because the sensitivity is not set properly. Let me turn this into the other direction. That turned a little off, and these are a little high. If I go to the other direction, When we put the tire, it seems this is uh, way high, this area. If I put, let's put a ruler and from this surface, This is 1.8 millimeter. This is 18 millimeter. And let's see the height of this. 
7 millimeter. So this is 7 millimeter and that's 18. So we will have uh, exact distance between this and the ground should be 11 millimeter or 1 centimeter. So I'm going to put the two wheels. Actually, I'm going to put all wheels. I have the wheels, so now this sensor is exactly on the on the tape. As you can see, we see we get twenty thousand seventeen and three thousand one hundred. So that is very good. These two should be almost close to each other. That's twenty thousand. That's seventeen. But the right side is three thousand. Now let's go to the middle. So 17,000 and then 13,000, that's a 6,000, that's, that's correct. Let's see the last one. So this is the left one, and this, this is the left, 8,400, this is 13,000 and 14,000. Let's see if we can get better result by calibrating it properly. Not good. If I go to the right, now now this is very dim and these are very right. So 18,000, 1,100, this is 4,000 and 5,000. Let's go back. So that's 5,000, that's 15,000, 14,000. Let's go to the middle. 18,000, 15,000, that's 5,000. Let's go to the right. 19,000, 18,000, and 4,000. So that's, they are far apart, and uh, the line that it measures with the lowest reflection, because that's black, black is not reflecting, so we are getting the lowest value, and from the white, we are getting the highest value. So the calibration, I believe, is correct. If I put this above 10 centimeter, you will get around 1,200. So this means that there is big difference. Be so there is a big difference between hollow, black, and white area. Now, let's see how the line following or following the line will work. So first we have our car and then we have a path, a black line and then we have this grayscale sensor. Our grayscale sensor has three sensing elements, far apart like this, and so now when, when we read the value, if the sensor is on the line, we will read one. But if the sensor is off the line like this, it's not on the line, then we, we, we will read zero. So remember, one is on the line and zero is outside the line. And because we are using three sensors, we will have three values as a list in MicroPython. Like for this each sensor, you have zero, one, zero, or one. We will have values like zero or one, depending if they are on the line or not. In this case, the center sensor is on the line, and the value that we read is zero, one, zero, because this is zero, and the middle one is one, it's on the line, and then zero. And in this case, because the car is on the line, then we will use uh, this function that, let's say, if the tires are rotating, if the wheels are rotating at 50% power, all the four will be like this, 50, 50, 50, and, and the car will proceed forward and it doesn't need to go left or right. Now, if the two sensors on the right are on the path on the line, in this case, then we will be reading 0, 1, 1, 0 because this is outside and these two are reading the line. And in this case, we are sending this 50, 0, 50. The first 50 is referring to this wheel, 
the second one is on the right, this 50 is for this, and the zero is on the right. So these two 50 is referring to these wheels because we need to go to the right, so this line comes this way, so this is these two wheels are pushing the car forward and as a result the car will go a little to the right. Now if we have only one on the right side and two on the left side then we need the car to go sharper to the right. In this case we are reading 0, 0, 1 because we have 0, 0 and then 1 and in that case what we do is we want to send these two wheels forward and these two wheels backward so we send 50 and then 50, this was the same as before, but these two now have minus 50, minus 50, which means they are rotating in the opposite direction. And as a result, the car will sharply uh, correct the path to the right. Now, if we have two sensors on the left, then in this case we are reading 1, 1, 0. This 0 is because of this, and these two ones are because of these two sensors. In this case, we want to bring the car to the left. So these two will be off and these two on the right are on and as a result we will push the car forward with a little angle, not too much, so the car will move back to the line. Now if we have only one sensor on the path then we are reading one zero zero like this for each sensor because these two are outside and we will get zero. Then what we do is we move these two wheels forward using this 50, 50, and then these two wheels backward, minus 50, minus 50, and as a result, the car will rotate sharply to the left with more sharp angle, and this will uh, quickly uh, uh, correct the path and goes on the line. And this was how the car stays on the path. Now to understand the gray scale, I have imported the same portion I said while true forever. We are just printing grayscale or GS and car dot grayscale status will give you the status. It will return an, a list of three elements for for the three sensors for these three. So from left one, two, three, we will get the value. If it detects a line, we will get one. If it sees white area it will be zero so we get a list something like this so we get like that like this so the first one has not this is white nothing detected this here this has detected and this has not the result of this is a list we just spoke it's called gs or grayscale data and we have some time here, like 100 milliseconds, and then we print it. Now, if I run it, if I run the code here, right now it shows 0, 0, 0, which means, let's see, if I put this on the line, as you can see, the middle one is in here, and we read, you see, the, the text is reading continuously with 100 milliseconds. So the middle one. If I bring it a little to the left, so this will be to the right, we should read on this area, we should read one. You see, now we are reading one because it's on that line. Now, if I bring it to the left, you see we are re reading, on the left side we are reading one. If I put it on the black, we are reading one, 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 because it's, this area is also black. But if I put this white, we are reading zero, zero, zero. So we understood how each uh, color is reflected as a number. Now if I go above the ground, like this high, now we are reading 1, 1, 1, as if nothing is reflected because on black there, there is no reflection and as you can see now there is reflection from white so we are getting 0 and if I go up then because it's too much we set the sensitivity so we are not reading anything. Now if we go to this line track under the examples inside the main examples line track this is the code so the motor power is set for 100% and this is the grayscale lines 
So 10,000, because this function is running and it's getting. And the most important part is here. It says this data, if the data is equal, these two equal sign means compare 0, 1, 0, which is exactly at the middle is on the line. And the value that we read is 0, 1, 0, because this is 0 and the middle one is 1, it's on the line and then 0. And in this case, because the car is on the line, then we will use uh, this function that let's say wheels are rotating at 50% power, the car will proceed forward and it doesn't need to go left or right. So exactly like this sensor, this is exactly at the, on the line like this at the middle. Then this line we have the motor power set to 100 and then here we are controlling the motor car, set motor power, motor power, motor power, motor power, and then the fourth one. So the motor power is 100%, which means all motors should run forward with 100%, which means we are exactly on the line. Don't go left or don't go right. So continuous. And also this is just setting the color, setting the bottom color. So this is the path that I've created for our robot. I've printed it in computer like this and I've attached them like that. You can see the lines. This was the whole paper was very thick but I put four of them in order to make this long track. And I'm gonna put our robot here for the first time, make sure that one of the line is uh, below the sensor. You see these three sensors, these three pieces. So if I put it somewhere at the middle, for sure, one of them is covering the path because the sensor is too long. So we have three sensors. One would be enough. Let's turn it on. So when the tire gets separated, this is what happens. <laughs> oh poor robot. Now, if to avoid that uh, loss of wheel, we can just cut a little tape and attach the tape to the shaft and just a second, you see, I, I just attached it. Now this will make it tighter. And when I connect this again, now when I insert this, this time it will be tight. Let's do one more on this side as well. I push it, I'm holding it from inside. As you can see, there is, no, there is no room, and now it should be tight. Now, these two are not that tightened, but let's test it and see. And it is on the line now. Let's just turn it on. When it's straight, we get all green. As soon as it turns left and right, the color changes. Let's just get it. That's enough. Now I have set the speed to 50% and let's try it.
Thank you for watching and Raspberry Pi Pico lesson from Robojax. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thumb up the video. You can wait a few seconds. The next lesson will start automatically or click on the link to proceed now.